The eight of us move forth, not back, to protect our king from a foe's attack. What are we? The answer? Chess pawns. So today I thought I'd give you kind of my top ten a top ten rundown of my personal favourites YouTubers, YouTube artists. Technically there are eleven on this list, but I've managed to fit them into ten places. They they're gonna go in no particular order because frankly all of these guys do kind of different things. So if I were trying to rank them as overall it would be way too difficult. So I thought today I'd give you kind of a list of some of my personal favourite YouTubers. And I run down some of the stuff they do. My bottom two that I'm going to start off with are... I'm putting them here because they were kind of subject of controversy over the past two years. First one on my list is Fine Brothers Entertainment. Run by the Fine Brothers uh, Benny and Rafi Fine... They can produce React content. React, you've probably seen quite a few of their videos over the last few years, such as Kids React, Teens React, Elders React, College Kids React. I mean, they were subject of controversy after their React World thing kind of failed, but I still feel that even with all the controversy that they went through, they still kind of continue to produce some kind of good content, some entertaining content. And so, yeah. And the other one that has a bit of controversy that you can't really escape, Channel Awesome. I know that they had a bit of controversy quite recently, but once again, like Fine Brothers Entertainment, Channel Awesome still does some pretty awesome stuff with uh, T Tamara Chambers uh, reviews of movies, uh, Walter Benaziak's Top Fives, and Doug Walker's uh, nostalgia critic rants. I mean, they're just, it's a very entertaining to watch and they've got some very good content. Anyway, moving kind of, moving along, the next YouTuber that I, I admit as a personal favourite, Council of Geeks. Mostly kind of vlogs or kind of reviews done by Nathaniel Wayne. It It's essentially a channel that kind of reviews geek content, such as uh, Doctor Who episodes, classic geek movies, yeah, and I personally feel it does well. And you kind of can watch them and kind of see your viewpoint come to life, and the way he talks about his, it's quite a good one. Next up, I this is where the 10 technically came into an 11, but I had... It's Cinema Wins and by Connection Cinema Sins. Cinema Sins is great in that you can give, sit down, watch a movie, and then realise, hang on, no, they've got a point there, yeah. Yeah, they've got a point. That, that, that wasn't very well thought out. But then you can go with Cinema Wins and just see why your favourite movies are awesome. And you know what? That, that's good you know, every once in a while. In an age of, kind of constant criticism where everything is overanalyzed, okay, some parts by Cinema Sins, Cinema Wins can give you a good break from it. I mean, Cinema Sims can make you see the problems that it has, and Cinema Wins can make you see why it's awesome. You know what? That's good. The next one that I would particularly like to talk about on my personal favourites list, Phantom Strider. I mean, the YouTube personality of Josh Strider, he kind of like some of the other ones on this list, he kind of reviews kind of cl classic shows or kind of classic cartoons. And... And often does kind of rankings on them. I mean, I I was unsure of him when I first kind of saw his content, but I think he, he hooked me in, and he really has a kind of good way of kind of presenting it. I mean, the team ups he does are also kind of quite fun every now and again. But yeah, I admit it's not always perfect. But Phantom Strider, I think, does some good work. Next one on my list, Team Edge. I'll be honest. If you watch Team Edge for too long, you just you just begin to think to yourself, these guys have way too much time on their hands. But just sitting down to watch Team Edge do it, some of the most fun stuff I've seen in a while. I mean, just practicing things like you remember Healy's kind of. I think they were popular around two thousand six. I remember them from when I was in primary school, but I 
and have had a perverse lead. I mean, they try and do a race with Heelys, and honestly, it's just great fun to watch. I mean, just seeing them create some massive games and have so much fun, such as giant version of Kaplunk. Yeah, you do think to yourself after a while, man, these guys have way too much time on their hands, but then you just have so much fun watching them that, yeah, it's worth it. One up from Team Edge is Super Carlin Brothers. Another pers personal favourite of mine. Run or okay, presented by Jay and Ben Carlin, who gave review... Gave... Well, they, they review a variety of stuff. The two main gave review sections I know them for are Pixar and Harry Potter. But, honestly, they do some really good work with Pixar and Harry Potter. They make you give bring you back into those worlds that you think for, for a time, yeah, I might have left that behind, and then they present their stuff and you begin to think, no, I haven't left that stuff behind. And even if you think you know everything about Harry Potter, they'll present a new viewpoint and you just think, hang on, yeah, there's a lot more to explore with this. So, yeah, Super Girl and Brothers is another one that's on my personal favourites. Another one that I I haven't watched this one so much recently, but I... Admit, Doug did form the love part of my life for a while. Pranksters in love. I mean, frankly, it's hard to describe pranksters in love. I mean, the relationship that John and Nikki have, it it's weird, it seems dysfunctional, but somehow they make it work. I mean, just watching these two kind of constantly be at each other's throats or... Going in with new pranks, such as uh, putting a phone in jello, soaking each other, pretending to soak each other in blood, or kind of putting a uh, purple dye in their shampoo. It's weird, but somehow they've made it work. And the two, two of them are now kind of happily married with a kid. And you just managed to think, how have they managed to do that when they seem so dysfunctional for so much time? But you know what? It just proves that love finds a way, and they've kept it going for so long, and they've managed to make it work. You got to see how much their kind of relationship developed with them, and how much their kind of lives developed, to a point where, yeah, they're now very popular on YouTube. One one step up from them is uh, Tom, Tom Scar. Thomas Ridgewell... He was one of the first YouTubers that I actively remember kind of looking at. And while you don't kind of see so much on his main channel anymore, he mainly kind of, for the past few months at least, he's kept a, you know, his Dark Squidge account. But he he has managed to do some very funny stuff that I still remember kind of from my early days of YouTube. And he manages to do it in a very kind of fun way. I mean, I mean, whether it's his kind of sketch comedy, his life updates, or his ASDF movie cartoons or whatever, this guy was immensely talented, and he just managed to bring me into you the kind of YouTube world, and he is just is brilliant. I mean, I mean, his comedy sketches. The guy is funny. There's no doubt about that. Whether it's that they're fighting a zombie apocalypse and then going through with like any last regrets, or or even just an ASDF movie of I like trains. Just it it the stuff he made is brilliant. And the last one that I'd like to talk about on my personal favourite YouTube is one that eh, I'd seen before but I think really has kind of become one of my favourites in the past few months or so. Jack Septakai. I I frankly he's become iconic. I mean, even if even if you've never seen a Jacksepticeye video in your life, or I've never really kind of been a fan of him, you know his classic intro of "Top of the morning to you, laddies." I mean, I mean, my, my apologies, my apologies if it, if that kind of offended anyone, but you know what? The guy is a legend, and frankly, he's brilliant. I mean, even if you're not a fan of his movies, you've got to love him. Just so much energy, so much fun, and you know what? He deserves his place on my list. But there you go, kind of t ten of my favourite personal YouTubers. Yeah, personal favourite YouTubers. Yeah. Anyway, until next time, I leave you with a question. If you look at the numbers on my face, you won't find 13 any place. What am I? <laughs> I'll leave you a ponder over that one. See ya.